Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be um, one that people have been asking me about to just re-update and cover. It's going to be creating a UI and making it pop up or appear on a trigger. So, all you need to do is when you start a new scene, uh, you want to have an FPS controller. You want to have the standard assets, and if you don't already, you can bring those in. You can right-click, um, import custom, and bring in the characters, or you can download them from the store. I've just got a plane here which you can see so we can walk around on it. So you want to be able to create a trigger so we can make this happen. So you want to go game object, 3D object and maybe create a cube. It doesn't really matter what primitive shape you use, you can use anything you want. I'll make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it. So that's all well and good, we've positioned it in our scene. We want to go on the right hand side in the inspector and go and set this to is trigger and then from there. What we want to do is click back on our FPS controller if you've made sure you've dragged that in and you want to make sure that it's got a tag of player and all you do is click the drop down and um, choose player unless you need to add the tag to create it because we're going to reference that in the script. So that's that for the trigger. What you might want to do is also you know create the UI element. So for Unity 5 we can go game object UI and we can add an image. This will automatically add our canvas and our event system. Now the canvas is just the main thing that controls the, the, when it changes on resolution and things like that. But the image is what we're going to be able to change and make appear. So if we are at the top um, in the Unity, we go to 2D and we just press F when once we select it on image, it'll zoom all the way in to what we have in the sort of 2D um, UI space. So what we can do on this image is just we want to reset it to the middle. So what we can do on the um, rectangle transforms is in the drop down at the top we want to right click and press reset and it will reset the positions to zero 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 so in our game you can see it's directly in the center. Now you can add your own source image sprite whatever you need to because you can bring in an image and just make sure that it's a UI or sprite and then you can add it anywhere you like. So once we've got this that's absolutely fine we can go on and start making a script so we can right click in the project panel go create and choose C sharp script and we can call this UI appear. Once we've done that we can open that up in Visual Studio. Now in our class that we've got here we can start by writing the script that we need to do but first of all if we want to reference something from the Unity UI we need to use um, a namespace. We can add using Unity Engine dot UI with a semicolon on the end at the top and then within our class here what we can do is we can start by writing in square brackets serialize field then we can write private image and we can have this called custom image and what all this means is that we've got a private variable and image we needed to um, use this namespace up here to get access to this um, element because it wouldn't would have to write it in a long more more long-winded way otherwise and we're just naming it custom image and serialized field just means that we'll make it visible in the inspector without making it a public variable so now what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple on trigger enter so we'll write void on trigger enter and then in brackets we'll write collider with a capital and then write other after that it can be you can write whatever you want in instead of other but I'll write other for the sake of this. Then we want to say that if other dot compare tag, and then in brackets in quotes player, and it should do all your syntax for you. So you just need to make sure that you have these in brackets and have the player in brackets. Then what we're going to say is that custom image dot enabled equals true. So when we actually enter the trigger, we want to enable the custom image. And what we can do is we can copy this entire function and then just below uh, second to last uh, curly bracket we can paste that in again and instead of it being on the trigger enter we can change this to on trigger exit and when we exit it we want the custom image to equal to false so we're going to turn it off so all it's doing is that when we enter the trigger we're looking for the player if the player is found we're going to enable the custom image that we want and when we exit it it's going to look for the um, say do is the player there no so we'll turn it off so what we'll do is we will go on to our cube that we created if i go back into 3d space and i press f i'll zoom back into my cube i can add the ui appear on there and you can see that it's asking for a custom image and the one that we had on the canvas here 
we can have this image, you can rename it to something I want. You know, I want this to appear just to make it obvious. So we go to the cube and I'll drag this on. What you want to do is on that um, image, what we can do is we can make sure we can untick it so it's actually not visible when we play. So if you see, we'll press play. And you can see that when we start, you can't actually see anything. And we'll walk towards our trigger. And you say that when we're inside the trigger, you can see the UI that appeared. And then if we walk away, it'll disappear again. So just very simply like that. And you can add this to as many game objects as you need to. And you can, as I said, you can change the image based on that, whatever you need. So if I give you an example, we can click the little um, arrow and I can change this to, could change this to one of the standard assets from Unity, which is the robot crouching. So then you can see it there. So you can change it to whatever you need to, if you want to bring it in. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. This shows you how to simply make a UI appear on a trigger event. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.